Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for protecting us throughout the week and then give us a new life throughout the week. Father, at this time, we want to worship you and we don't know what you have prepared for us. But at this time, we pray that you pour out your blessings, shower of blessings to our heart. And by receiving this blessing of the word, may everything that had a problem be solved and come to life. Father, let us be the true children of a blessed son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And let us live as a true Christian who will enlighten this dark word. And then thank you so much for your wisdom and understanding that you bestowed upon us. And we thank everything in Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Today's Word of God will be about the 10 plagues. I'm sure you have heard about it. All right. The main scripture reading is coming from Exodus chapter 7, 3 to 5. Let's read Exodus chapter 7, 3 to 5. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that I may multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. When Pharaoh will not listen to you, then I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring out my host, my people, the son of, sons of Israel, from the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the sons of Israel from their midst. And this is the word of God. Amen. Okay, we learned about Mr. Moses last week, right, Philemon? So, what is God's plan? Generally and always, God's plan is to rescue us, rescue his people from captivity. Well, let's review in case you missed. Well, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God's family lived in Egypt. They were slaves. Pharaoh said baby boys must die. Moses' mom had a plan. Moses was adopted. He ran away. Moses returned to his people. He ran away. God appeared as fire. Moses argued with God. Finally, Moses obeyed. He knew he belonged in God's family. And that's a part of God's story. Great. So, Mr. Moses was picked up as the leader of the Exodus. But why did Exodus happen? Because of God's promise. So God picked the one person, father of faith, Abraham. And then he formed a family of faith, family of worship. Well, during those times, you really can't find any church in, on the earth. Think about it. You only found a family who are really believing God and worship. So don't feel really sorry or alone about lonely about you have only few people who worship together god originally had just one family of abraham and god wanted to make this nation and god was willing to do it god was able to do it so god gave the promise so oh but guess what like a popcorn god wanted to put his people into the land of egypt and then after two or three minutes of microwave, he want to pop it up. It's a people of a nation. You know, to form a nation, you need certain number of a lot of people, right? So it took how many years? 400 years. So the thing is, you have to become slaves. And then you'll be mistreated. It's not going to be really fun. But I will punish those bad people, right? How great is that? Even though bad people mistreat you, say, you better not touch God's people, then they will ask you, why not? I don't care, right? Answer them. Because my God is so big and so strong and mighty, he will judge you. The promise of the covenant of the torch, it's written in Genesis 15, 14. But I will also judge the nation 
whom they will serve. So the power of God says, God said, says the Lord, it's so great, right? Out of one word, he created the heavens and the earth. Okay, so do you like the Simon Says game? Hi, Simon. <laughs> if Simon says, gives a command by first days, um, Simon says, then the listeners must not obey Simon's command. Likewise, when God says his word, we must obey God's word. If you don't obey Simon, you will lose the game. But if you do not obey, it won't be pleasant at all. Okay, God said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh said, no, I won't let your people go. And that's what happens when people don't listen to God. Now it came to pass that the children of Israel cried out to God because the Egyptians had them in bondage. And their cry came up to God and God remembered his promises to them. Moses was living as a shepherd in the land of Midian. And the Lord appeared to Moses in a burning bush. And the Lord said, Take off your shoes, because this is holy ground. I have seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry, so I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians. I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people out of Egypt. Moses did not think he could do that. The Lord said, I will be with you, Moses, and show Egypt all of my power. And Moses obeyed what the Lord commanded him and went to Egypt. He said to Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go. But Pharaoh said, No. So the Lord sent plagues on the land of Egypt. Moses lifted up his rod over the water in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and all the water was turned to blood throughout all the land of Egypt. The second plague the Lord sent was frogs. And the frogs came into the Egyptian houses, into their bedrooms, on the people, into their ovens, and into their kneading bowls. So frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Ew. Ew. Then Moses took his rod and struck the dust, and it became lights throughout all the land of Egypt. And Moses returned to Pharaoh, but God hardened his heart, and he would not let God's people go. Then the Lord sent a fourth plague. Thick swarms of flies came into the house of Pharaoh and his servants and all the land of Egypt. Then the Lord sent a very severe pestilence in all the livestock of Egypt so that they died. With the sixth plague, the Lord caused boils to break out on all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he did not let the children of Israel go. Then the Lord sent thunder and hail on the land of Egypt, and hail struck all that was in the field, both man and beast, and every herb of the field, and broke every tree of the field. In the eighth plague, the Lord caused locusts to cover the land of Egypt. They ate every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. So there remained nothing green on the trees or on the plants of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. The ninth plague was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. Still, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. The Lord told the children of Israel to take a lamb, kill it, and put the blood on the doorposts of their houses. For those who obeyed, the Lord would pass over their house, and the tenth plague would not hurt them. Then they were to eat the lamb with unleavened bread. This was the first Passover meal. For those who did not obey, all the firstborn in the land of Egypt died, from the firstborn of Pharaoh to the firstborn of his servants. Finally, Pharaoh let God's people go. The 
the children of Israel left Egypt, praising the Lord for his great power. I really want to do it with you guys. Okay, so what, what was the template? Blood, frogs, nets, or you call it lice, flies, livestock. So the hard word is pestilence, boil, hail, locusts, darkness, and the death of the firstborn. So God proved to the Egyptians that he is the one true God. Well, one day when I was in New York, the Egyptian, like true Egyptian, <laughs> came to our church as a newcomer, so we didn't know what to preach. <laughs> but this Egyptian is not talking about the people in Egypt right now, but in the Bible, spiritually, Egypt is the place where Jesus was died on the cross. So Egypt, Babylon, all these people or all these nations is representing those evil uh, forces of Satan, okay? Number one, God judged all the false gods of Egypt too. You know that there's a false god. You know there are ghosts, all right? Exodus 12, 12, against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Well, people are worshiping sun, moon, and stars. They're doing that still now, right? But God even judged dead gods. So you use God's, right? Plural, and then small letter, not the capital. You always use capital for real God, our God. But other false gods, not the capital letter. So number two, God selected Pharaoh to show his power to all. Well, Pharaoh is the head of these evil forces. But even that head of the, um, I would say, terrorist, God can use it. God can use that person to show God's majesty and power to everybody in the world. Romans chapter 9, 17. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. Okay? Okay, what kind of lesson can we learn from this? Number one, I don't know if you catch that, but Pharaoh hardened his heart. What does it mean to have a hard heart? He never listens. It's stubborn. Very difficult to move. And did the plague of painful sore change Pharaoh's heart? Did it? Yeah, you're right. No, Pharaoh still refused to let the people go. If a police officer tells you to do something and you don't do it, what's going to happen? Right? Then what if God tells you to do something and you don't do it? What will happen? Right? So God used Pharaoh to show his majesty. But still, he had 10 chances. He hardened his heart. So after a certain point, God hardened Pharaoh's heart too. That's the scary part. Listen carefully. God can harden your heart and you don't want to listen to the word of God you don't want to listen to your parents you don't want to listen to the teachers you don't want to listen to the pa pastors sometimes if you go that long deep follow that's gonna be really hard for you lesson number two God uses the smallest to hit the strongest this is awesome stuff God used the very small things to judge the strong nation. Boys and girls, you are the little and small, maybe powerless or moneyless. But remember, God uses the smallest one to hit the strongest one. God used Moses' staff, and it was God's staff. Number two, nets. You know, you try to catch some nets, it's really hard to catch the fruit flies and nets and makes you crazy right and the flies oh love box like 
I don't want to talk about love box, but and locusts, right? God uses the small things. In Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse twenty, you know, God can use even hornet. When they conquered the land of Canaan, the Lord your God will send a hornet to drive out the few survivors still hiding from you. Let's say you have two million people to drive out, and let's say three people were hiding in the basement, maybe behind the wall. I don't know, but the Lord your God will send a hornet or. Let's say coronavirus to catch those few survivors still hiding from you. They're they're hiding from you, but they are holding the guns. So if you don't drive them out, they will just shut gun for you. That's why God drives them out with the smallest things. So anything is possible. Nothing will be impossible with God. So once God says, you can be the strong one. Moses could be the strong leader because God said, and God gave all the power. So, Philemon, Simon, Simeon, angel, you can be used by God for the greater thing. Okay, number three. Where did they live? Out of those big land of Egypt, they lived in the land of Goshen. But only in that part, the land of Goshen, where God's people were living, there's no swarm of in- insects. In Exodus chapter eight, verse twenty-two says, and also God made a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing would die of all that belongs to the sons of Israel. Isn't that nice? If you have a business or a store, and then according to the Exodus chapter nine verse four, God will distinguish, God will separate those people, and then God will uh, reserve your business. That's gonna be great, right? Exodus chapter nine twenty six also says, only in the land of Goshen, where the sons of Israel were, there was no hail. So how about that? If God distinguishes your church, and if God says only in the church covenant of the Torah church or the church you have, where the sons of Israel were, there's no coronavirus. That sounds nice, like that. Exodus chapter ten twenty three, they did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days, but throughout the darkness for three days. All the sons of Israel had light in their dwellings. Isn't that wonderful? Think about the whole nations is just out of power, or there's no sunlight, but only you have the light. So you can read the Bible, and you can eat, and you can just play around. So you have to pray for the blessing of Goshen. So Psalm ninety one. Nine to ten, for you have made the Lord my refuge, even though most high your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. You know, let me give you the the greatest secret. In the end times, this is just the beginning. Coronavirus is just nothing. You will see the worst things. There, you're you're gonna see the worst plays coming, but don't worry about it. That's why your refuge must be God, and then the fact that you take the refuge in God is take the refuge in the Word of God. So I was wondering, how can the Word of God can be can be my refuge, my hiding place? It's because you have the Word of God, and then God protects you. That's the that's the big secret. For the seven great、um, tribulations in the end, doesn't matter. You take the word of God as your refuge, then you refine. And God Himself, who is God, the word, word of God itself, He will protect you. Lesson number four. Let's think about the redemptive historical meaning. Try to find a black spot on your friend's face or your mom's face next to you. 
Is there a black spot? 점, 점 있어? There's no purely spotless person in the world. Oh, I have like 25 spots here. And then there's no purely spotless lamb in the world. The Israelites, people were sinful. And they deserved death as well. Just as much as the Egyptian did. You have to know, Christians are not spotless. We have sins too. But God graciously provided a way out by marking their do doorposts with the blood of the Lamb. They were spared from the judgment and death were pass that they deserved. The Lamb was killed instead. The heart of the gospel is found in the story of Passover. Jesus never sinned. But he was crucified for our sins. We deserve death, but he died instead. So it's like replacing and exchanging the life and death of each other. God told every Israelite family to kill a lamb and sprinkle its blood on the doorpost of their houses. This would be a special mark that God would see and pass over. No one in the Israelites' families would die. At midnight, God struck every firstborn in the land of Egypt. There was a great cry in Egypt because there wasn't a house without someone dead. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. Go, he said. All of the Israelites quickly left Egypt. At Passover, God spared the Israelites from judgment by requiring the blood of a lamb. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, and God provided a way for them to escape through the Red Sea. The Bible says that Jesus is greater than Moses. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. People who trust in Jesus escape the penalty of sin and have eternal life. Okay, so... During those times, people were saved by the blood of the Lamb. And then now we're saved from sin and death by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. But in the end time, so that, that is your past, our past. You're saved and your soul is anchored in heaven. Hey, Philemon, you have three elements in you soul mind and body okay and then your soul is already saved and it's stored in heaven let's say it's anchored in heaven already so even though you sleep in the grave it's not a grave anymore it's your home new home new normal because <laughs> you're going to heaven right away you close your eyes and then you thought oh i die but you're not dead you're the living. You, you're in heaven right away. It doesn't take a second. Okay, angel? But your body is sleeping until the second coming. But before the second coming, you're going to see a great, great tribulations. Bad things happen. But you need the seal of God. Because God promises that if you have the seal of God, you will be saved. Revelation chapter 9, verse 4. I want to read this together. Ready? Revelation chapter 9, verse 4. They were told not to harm the grass or plants or trees, but only the people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So if you have the seal of God on your forehead, you'll be saved. Ezekiel chapter 4, I mean chapter 9, verse 4 and 6. God said to Ezekiel, Walk through the streets of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of all who weep and sigh because of the detestable things being committed in their city. Kill them all, but do not touch anyone with the mark. Begin right here at the temple. So they began by killing the elders. Ho, 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 ho. Elders in the temple. Hey, this is scary word god judged the people in the end that god sees the your 
true core heart of worship. So if you are fake, it doesn't matter. You are elders or pastors, evangelists at church. It doesn't matter. God will start his judgment from the temple. But if you truly believe in the word and after you were saved by the blood of Jesus and you worked on hard to read the Bible and have this word of God, then God will put this seal on your forehead. And finally, you will be the main figure who will be transfigured and go to heaven. Okay? That's why you need a seal of God in the end times. So how do you get the seals again? You are saved by believing in the precious blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. That's the first step. And you are baptized, but you need the seal of God by knowing the Word of God. That's why knowing the Bible, knowing the Word of God is so important. You have to finish reading the 66 books of the Bible and you have to work on to understand and then figure out the deep meaning of the Bible. That's our homework. So God is waiting for us to finish this homework. Let's do it, okay? Memory verse, Romans chapter 9, 17. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. For this very purpose, I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. So remember, God uses anyone and God uses the smallest things to conquer the great, conquer the strongest. So I hope and pray that you may be uh, used by God in, your, in His hand and then you may receive the blessing of a Goshen so that you can be distinguished from this place. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for teaching us about the secret of the end times. And then thank you for saving us from these spiritual ten plagues. Even though there can be scary things happening in our future, let us be receiving this seal of God by knowing the word, by receiving the Holy Spirit, by living a true Christian life. Father, at this time we pray that may you seal each and every one of us here and then those who truly worship you in truth and spirit. And may these young people be greatly used in your hands like Moses in the end times and keep us from all harms and evil even their hair might not be touched by satan and devil we pray this in the name in the name of jesus christ in thanksgiving amen keep your tithes and offerings okay so keep reading the bible and the history of rhythms and series and study online okay and in pray for going back to school if there's any questions Let's answer with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our trespassers against us. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for everything. Hi, hi, hi. Is Young Nim there?